and welcome to High School Physics Explained. Um, in a previous video, I talked about superposition and how waves add up. And um, in that case, we were only looking at it from a one dimensional perspective. And today I want to talk about how waves add up from a two dimensional perspective. And again, I want to just thank uh, for the work of uh, the University of Colorado and their FET team who are producing some excellent animations and I encourage you to have a look. So here I have a dripping tap and I have the ability to control the frequency and the amplitude and we're just concentrating on the frequency at the moment and you will notice that if I pause this for a brief moment you can see that we have successive wave fronts and of course they represent the crests and the troughs of these waves and they are radiating in two dimensions but no way can we actually see any interference because we have only one wave. So the way to fix that is we introduce two drips and clearly what these waves are, are is interacting with each other and they are adding up and subtracting and they are producing interference. Can you see it? Now let me just pause it for a moment to show you what's going on. So if I just pause it, you can clearly see there are two important regions to have a look at. So for example, if I look at this section over here, it's a very strong wave. And so along this whole line right there, what is happening is, is that these two waves at every point along that line, they're sort of heading in the right same direction, but at this point, they're always adding up. In other words, what we say is these guys are producing constructive interference. So, right? because they are always adding up in that point in time. So if you were in the water, you would always get the crest of both. You would always get the trough of both. And so you'd be bobbing up and down quite violently. Now the same is true is if we were to look at other points. So for example, over here is the same situation, over here is the same situation, and over here is the same situation. And so clearly we have areas where no matter what, uh, what position along the line you are sitting at, you will always find that your two waves will be in phase with each other. The crests line up, the troughs line up, and so forth. Now, of course, this works because these two guys are producing waves at the same rate, which means the wavelength is also the same. But let's also have a look at what is happening at the points in between. And in this case, I'm going to color it slightly differently. And you'll see I have regions, lines along here where there seems to be these dead spots. There seems to be no wave whatsoever. And these lines are lines of destructive interference. That is, at these lines here, if you were to be sitting in the water along these lines, whenever you would get a crest of one, you'd get the trough of the other. Whenever you get the trough of one, you'd get the crest of the other and everything else in between. In other words, those two waves at the, anywhere along that line are completely out of phase. They always cancel out. And so you have this cancelling out effect. And that is simply what we call interference in two dimensions. And we have this radiating out uh, effect of lines of constructive interference and lines of destructive interference. Now, if I remove this over here and remove the annotations, and then were to look this at an example of sound, then the sound, it's exactly the same thing. Now, with sound, of course, I've got two speakers and I've got these wave fronts here, but in this case, the wave fronts are not representing crests and troughs, they're representing areas of compression and areas of refraction because sound, as you know, is a longitudinal wave. But the property is still the same. So if I just pause this for a second and I were to draw lines that represent areas where these lines are clearly adding up, then we clearly have a line adding up here and a line adding up here and a lining out up here and so forth. And so the sound would appear very loud at these lines over here because you're always getting your two waves in phase with each other. But if I were to then look at 
standing at these lines and I'd have to stand directly on these lines, um, then I would find that the sounds would actually cancel out. In other words, I could have two speakers going, but I could practically hear nothing. Now, if you were to try this, you can try this. All you'd have to do is set up your speakers at home, outside, and make sure you're playing a, a monotonic sound, so a single frequency sound. And if you were to move across those speakers, you would get these dead spots and these loud spots. And you wouldn't get it perfectly quiet simply because the line is very a sharp line. And anywhere beyond that, you'd start to getting some sound coming from one speaker or the other. And since your ear will pick up a, basically a a sort of cone of sound, uh, you're not going to get a complete deadening effect. But nonetheless, you will notice it will be actually loud and soft. And in fact, if you try this at home, all you need to do is walk across the path of your speakers left and right, and you would notice the volume would go up and down and up and down as you move those across. Um, lastly, what I want to talk about is, is the fact that these positions of these lines is determined also by the frequency. So, for example, if I were to draw my initial, uh, again, my lines of just destructive interference, because we're only interested in the destructive ones like so, uh, for the moment, is let's play this animation along and like so. If I now change the frequency, watch what happens. You can see now the lines have shifted. Okay, they've moved closer in like that. If I were to reduce the frequency significantly, you will notice that my lines now have moved beyond the initial lines they had. So in other words, the separation of loud and soft, the separation of constructive and destructive interference is determined by the frequency and of course also the wavelength as well. So it's not uh, the, the lines are not specifically determined just by the fact of its sound or um, waves or water or light and so forth. Frequency determines those positions. Um, I hope that has helped, been helpful and uh, stay tuned for my next video. Thanks for listening and watching. I hope you found that video useful. And remember, like, share and subscribe. Oh, and if you have a comment or a question, or you'd like a concept for me to explain to you, please drop a comment down below. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.